How's it going, everyone? I'm the Storm Dave, and welcome back aboard the Nostalgia Train. Okay, so we are in quote unquote the Stanley Parable 2. Shut up! What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps Brat. simply the confusion and the chaos all no, no. seem to melt away. I, I don't want to hear it. I don't want. Nope, nope. Turning you down. You are annoying. I don't want to hear it. And Stanley clutched the bucket tightly to his chest and entered the door. I can never tell when he's going to speak a certain volume. All right, we'll go left, and we're gonna do the same thing we did for the first few episodes, where we're just figuring out each ending and seeing the difference between having the bucket and not having the bucket. Check marks. A large room, lots of boxes, somewhere with red. Okay, so the opposite of progress. Coming to a staircase, Stanley and the bucket walk upstairs to the boss's office. As we do. Okay. So there are two endings I think I can still get from this. Actually, three. Stepping into his manager's office, Shut Stanley up, was dude. once again stunned to discover not an indication Eight, of any human. Two, four. Crushed by the weight of this revelation, Stanley may have broken down into an emotional dumpster fire, if not for the soothing presence two, of the bucket. Eight. Even now, in his darkest four, eyes, did five. the bucket's warmth but Stanley guessed the correct code by sheer luck. Okay, with was the bucket, you don't have to wait for him to say things. Was the bucket Good. Yes, this is certainly the most logical explanation. That gets kind of annoying to have to wait every time. That ah, thing was about to bite my uh, bucket handle. I don't like that. Elevator raced downward, plummeting towards an unknown fate. Okay. It all Stanley could do to keep himself together, if not for the bucket. Soothing him, comforting him, reassuring that in this darkest moment of uncertainty, he would be all right. The I get it. Stanley. Everything will be fine. All right, so I got two choices. I can either go back up and down a billion times and see what happens, or go to the escape point. Stanley and the bucket walked straight ahead through the large door that read Mind Control Facility. Bucket says go forward and go to the glitch. Or at least where a glitch was. The lights rose on an enormous room packed with television screens. What horrible secret did this place hold? Stanley and the bucket both. I can't jump. Me not being able to jump bothers me. I want to be able to jump. My bucket can jump. See, he's bouncing right now. The monitors jumped. English. And Stanley nearly dropped the bucket in shock. Everyone in the office was being videotaped, monitored like guinea pigs. We. Anything like this. Wait. But just as Stanley was about to proceed further into the mind control facility, he tripped and fell over the railing and into the dark void below. Thankfully, he fell directly onto the bucket. Which safely cushioned his fall. Huh? Now, what to do next? Stanley wondered. Stanley and the bucket could find no way out of this enormous pit, and so eventually they decided that the best thing to do would be to simply get comfortable down here. <laughs> so they set up a little couch and relaxed. It huh? really wasn't so bad down here, but a cold. What perhaps. the? After some time had gone by, they installed a few shelves as well. And a sort of kitchenette that was what for when the is going on. But it wasn't until the rugs and the standing lamps came in that it really started to feel like a home. In fact, this is actually kind of cute. Stanley realized <laughs> that it had been ages since he had even thought of the mind control facility at all. He'd never gotten to fully explore what was up there. Never been able to unearth the many mysteries of the mind control facility. Yeah, but we're fine down the here. Closure began to eat at him. Soon he was dwelling on his regrets, and the state of their home slowly decayed as Stanley became withdrawn and neglected the cleaning. Wait, the place.
place is starting to decay. Stanley wasn't usually like this. The bucket tried to reach out to him again and again, but to no avail. All Stanley could think about, all he could talk about, was going back, doing it over again, staying on the path. It was a mistake to leave the path. It was a mistake. It was a mistake. I need to do what the narrator says. I need to see the true ending. This made me uh. personal to the bucket. It was simply trying to live its life down here as comfortably as possible. Yet Stanley was uncontrollable. This isn't an ending. This is just a hole in the ground. The bucket. I mean, uh, yeah, but... It wasn't. It was kind of a little cute hole in the ground at first. Now it's a horror show. If we accept the reality of things, maybe this will become an ending eventually. It's what the bucket was counting on. Huh? The two of them waited for a very long time. What did I just find? Um, that's it. All right, well, let's go up and down the elevator. Uh, let's, let's go to the escape area first. Then we'll go up and down the elevator after that. All right, let's go. Okay, well, time to go up and down the elevator. I know I said I was going to do the escape wait, thing, but I'll Stanley wait. Wait, said to the bucket. Can we go back up? When I was pressing those keypad buttons, there was something very intriguing about the number three. I want to go back so I can try pressing the number three again. What? Bucket said nothing. Is that the game telling me to go back and press the number three? Wait. We are, said Stanley. No, I'm going to try out that number three button. Okay. He took the, the keypad and began absolutely slamming on the number three over and over and over. Well, he said, the number three is such a special button. I'm having the time of my life. Stanley looked expectantly at the bucket, but the bucket remained silent. This was a shock to Stanley, who had always felt such connection with the bucket. How was this not as exciting to the bucket as it was to him? Once Stanley had had enough of the number three, he got back in the elevator. Okay. Perhaps the bucket had missed something. Perhaps it had not seen how much joy Stanley got from huh? slamming the number three repeatedly. What? What? Okay. Time to go back up again because. No, 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 said Stanley to the bucket. You can't go on yet. Not till you understand how much the number three means to me. <laughs> you and what I the? have been through so much together, and I just want you to see what I see. Feel the happiness I feel. He smiled at the bucket, and the bucket said nothing. The, the bucket still said nothing. I'm not surprised. Buckets shouldn't be allowed to speak. They're inanimate objects. All right then, pushing the number three again for Here I don't goes, understand Stanley. why. This time I'll really show you. He ran to the number three and began to wail on it like a musician on a beloved instrument, weaving a concerto of truth and passion. He the. wielded the number three like a fine artist would wield a paintbrush. He okay. told stories through the number three. Stories of his dreams and hopes and fears. And the whole time, he looked to his bucket for a reaction of some kind. Anything to let him know that the bucket appreciated what he was doing. I'd be shocked if the bucket, the bucket appreciated anything. Absolutely nothing at all. Only silence. Crushed by a wave of dejection, Stanley returned to the elevator. Okay. Stanley and the bucket were so close. They'd always been there for one another. Why suddenly could the bucket not connect with this passion of Stanley's? The question caused Stanley to ruminate. Stanley has a passion for the number 
three. There must be a way to get through to the bucket to communicate fully with his dear friend. Surely there was a solution, mustn't there be? This is an interesting side story. Doesn't make sense at all, but sure. <sighs> and going back up because reasons. I really hope we don't have to do that for too much longer, though. That'd be a pain in the butt. <clears throat> Well, <laughs> said Stanley, I know what to do. I know how to fully express this feeling in my heart. He decided right then and there that he would hold a press conference where he would speak to the public on all matters relating to pressing the number three over and over. He would elaborate fully on what the number three meant to him and why he felt so alive when pressing it. Then the bucket that would be was important. To joy through the eyes of others. It would get to see the world react to this discovery of Stanley's. <laughs> and it would be through the public eye that the bucket would finally understand Stanley's work. Sure. Because it seemed very important when we first came up here Other without the bucket. advertised and marketed his press conference, building excitement around it, developing and rehearsing it, until it couldn't be refined a single measure further. When the big day arrived, Stanley was as prepared as he'd ever been for anything in his life. Okay. I mean, if you say so. At this stage, three, 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 three. Oh my gosh, so many threes. This was it. One last chance to win the bucket over. One opportunity to share a true connection with a loved one. Okay. I don't know how the number three is going to bring the bucket and Stanley together since, again, the bucket is inanimate. There was no one here. Nobody had come to the press conference to hear Stanley speak, to listen to him talk about what it really means to press the number three on a keypad over and over. He was unloved, uninteresting. He was a failure. And in that moment, Stanley knew that the bucket would never again take him seriously. There would be no connection, no deeper understanding. The bucket merely sat there in his arms, indifferent. Oh, wow. And so it began that slowly, over many years, the two of them grew more and more distant. They spoke less and less, neither wishing to state the obvious, that any sense of real respect between them had eroded since that day at the press conference. There would be no more games, no more long conversations about passion and pursuit, only a uh -oh. sense that consume the space between friends. And Stanley, having for once in his life discovered the warmth and comfort of true companionship, was cast back into the unremarkable normalcy of loneliness. Um, I don't like this ending. That was depressing. For what it was, that was really depressing. Okay. I'm going to do the escape route now. Meet you guys over there. Mind control facility. Nah, I'm done with that room. Let's escape. Although this passageway had the word escape written on it, the truth was that at the end of this hall, Stanley and the Bucket would both meet a violent death. I will make it so the Bucket will never leave me again. The door behind them was not shut. Stanley yeah. and the Bucket still had every opportunity to turn around and get back on track. This is on track, for what I want at least. Stanley and the Bucket were knowingly walking forward into a very painful death for each of them. Oh, well... That is a far way down. Okay. <sighs> well, I remember this. That. 
does not look friendly. As the machine whirred into motion and Stanley and the bucket inched closer to their demise, Stanley reflected on how meaningless the bucket's warmth and comfort had turned out to be. To be sure, it puts the mind and the soul at ease to embrace the bucket. I mean... What use is a sense of ease when you're about to be crushed with debt. This like... is what Stanley thought to himself, and he sort of kicked himself for wasting so much time carrying a bucket everywhere. Farewell, Stanley. Farewell, Stanley, cried the narrator, as Stanley and the bucket were led helplessly into the enormous metal drawers. In a single visceral instant, huh? the bucket's life came to an end as it was crushed violently to death. And yet here I am carrying the bucket. Why? It was a shame, the death of such a magnificent bucket. It's true that all buckets are radiant in their own way, but this one stood above the rest. It was a glorious bucket to behold. Wait, what the heck? I don't have the bucket anymore. Okay. Uh, the bucket welcomes you to the grand exhibit. Okay. Can you see how arrogant it was for Stanley to take a bucket like this and to claim it for his own? Can That'd be a lot of buckets. blinded him? Can you see that the bucket is far more noble than Stanley will ever be in his short life? Inferno bucket. A replica of the Inferno bucket, which... Uh, okay. Stress bucket. Okay. Random chair in the corner. Okay, then. This is no man can own a bucket, and certainly not a bucket as dazzling to behold as this one. Uh, yeah, sure, if you say so. The bucket. Huh? What just happened? But there is something we can do. Something we can do together, you and I, that will right this terrible wrong. Uh huh. Let Stanley die. Let him be crushed by the machine. Don't reset the game. Don't give him another opportunity to run off with another beautiful bucket. We can save the world's buckets from their treatment as tools and implements if only we let Stanley die together. The bucket shall take his place as ruler, as leader, as commander of a new world, a new vision. Well, okay then. That's kind of the reverse of what, like the, the, the when you go in alone, I, I feel like a lot of this does the reverse. It's weird. All right, we'll do one more ending and then stop after that. Let's cut ahead to when I decide to backtrack after failing to enter the boss's office. After that, we'll end. Okay, so in out. In out. Steady. Ha! Screw you. I cannot talk. Okay, so. Do, 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 do. We're basically backtracking into that escape ending, I think is what it's called. Except with a bucket. What is the difference? It is interesting, like, that you back you have to backtrack through the entirety of the office to get to it, but why? You are now leaving. Okay, speed run up the staircase. Okay, we're at the escape pod part again. What's gonna happen now? 
I do wonder how they could simply change this. All right, so escape pod. What's gonna happen? What? Okay, Stanley and the Plucket have quite the mixed up story here. I... depressing. Now, there is technically one more ending that we could do on the left side, but I'll save it for later. Um, after that, we'll just have all the things that he doesn't want us to do. Getting Done? Why is this different? Wait. The bucket's not there. So I let the bucket escape, and now it's not there. The depressing story of Stanley in the bucket. We'll figure this out later. I'm going to leave this here. Thank you guys so much for watching this episode of the Stanley Parable Ultra Deluxe. If you liked it, make sure to push that like button. It's so far you can't see it anymore. If you really liked it, consider subscribing to the channel. Have a suggestion for an indie game you'd like to see on here? Let us know in the comments below. Want to check out one that's been done prior to this? Click the link in the bottom right hand corner of the train to take you to that destination. Or if you missed any of the stops on this ride, click the link across right here in the train to take you there. In the meantime, this train's off to its next destination, but we hope to catch you guys in another ride. Bye!